So I found this incredible technology that did analytics and predictive analytics for your store. It was, you know, midnight. I'm at my computer. I'm, I'm doing searching. I'm asking questions. If you've ever used Google Analytics in your store, you know that everyone tells you, you know, connect it up to analytics, and then you do, and then later you're like, I still don't know what to do with this, right? There's a whole bunch of data, but nothing, no information, no insight. And so I was looking for tools, and I found one. And I found one that looked really incredible. On the first visit of a person on your store, just navigating your store, they could analyze the behavior on your site, compare it to the behavior of other people on your site, and then predict the lifetime value of that customer before they bought a single thing. And I was like, Oh my God, I need this. So it was really cool because they had a whole sign up, you know, no, no credit card needed. And uh, you would, you'd have to give them some integration, right? You'd give them your API for Stripe. You'd give them your API for MailChimp. They would look over all the emails you were sending out. They would look over all the orders that had come in. And then they would, and they said, you know, this could take, as we, as we mine over all your data, this could take a day or two before we get back to you, right? So I set it, did all the connections. And about 1 a.m. I went to bed. I was like, I can't wait to wake up tomorrow morning because now people are just going to browse on my site and I can see over their heads in virtual dollar signs how much they're worth to me. This is going to be awesome. So I wake up and uh, I have an email from the CEO of this company. And I'm like, oh, wow. And so I read it and it says... Chris, thank you so much for your interest in our technology. We've poured over the purchases from your site. And unfortunately, there's not enough data for us to make any predictions. We work with companies like Target, Under Armour, JC Penney's, and Best Buy to analyze their flow. You're doing $1,000 a month in revenue. We suggest you circle back when you're doing a million. <laughs> that was the most polite way to say piss off that I've ever read, right? But I tell you that story to tell you that in reality, when we talk about e-commerce and conversions, everybody starts somewhere, right? Everybody starts with a store. When I, when I was running one of my earlier stores years ago, someone said, oh, you wrote e-books. I said, yeah. And, and how are those selling? And I'm like, yeah, you know, they're, they're good. I mean, like, I guess it all depends. Like compared to zero, $200 a month feels like a lot of money, but it's not like I'm going to quit my day job, right? Everybody starts somewhere. And so today what we're going to do is talk about kind of that journey of how do you improve your store, right, for conversions so that you actually make more money, so that you have more traffic converting. And if you're a store owner, this is great for you, but if you're a person who helps store owners, right, if you design themes for your store or if you code and assemble stores, hopefully this will be applicable to you as well. Does that make sense? Awesome. All right. So the first thing we have to do is be really, really honest, and that is to say that e-commerce is really hard, right? And that there is no magic bullet. There is no this, do this and you'll make a million dollars a month, right? There are a whole bunch of things that you try, you test, you iterate through, and hopefully get to a point where you're like, this is working. I'm going to keep doing it. This isn't working so much. I'm going to turn it off. Does that make sense? Okay. So... Let's get into it. Single biggest factor in terms of conversions, the single biggest factor without question, so far beyond everything else that it's the only thing you should start with. And that's the speed and performance of your site. The speed and performance of your site. Uh, if you, I, I work a lot with WooCommerce, which is an online platform. Uh, if you go to WooCommerce.com slash showcase, you will see 562 stores 
over all the little clicks, next, next, next. You have 562 stores. Of the 560, because 562, uh, of those 562, a handful of those, 60 of them, no longer use WooCommerce, right? So they, they have, after they put their name up for the showcase, eventually they moved on to do something else, what have you. There's 502 stores in the showcase that still use WooCommerce. You're like, okay, great. So we took all those domain names and we threw them at GT Metrics, which is a solution that analyzes the performance of every one of those stores. Now to do that, we had to first go back and look at every store and figure out where their shop page was so that we were comparing apples to apples. 460 out of 502 load up in more than three seconds with an average of about seven or eight seconds. Google tells us that when they direct traffic, the magic number for them in terms of their ability to think about whether or not you care about your customers, right, is 2.7 seconds. It's 460 of the 502 already outside their reach. But there's other studies, right, that will say, oh, hey, if you're not below 2.7, right, you're going to see less conversions. We'll talk about that, but fundamentally, it's really simple to understand like this, to say, hey, if people aren't on your site, they can't convert, and people don't stay on a site that doesn't load. And so the first thing you have to do is make sure that you have a chance at converting someone, is that you have to make sure they're there, and that means you have to load quickly. Does that make sense? All right, so here are some stats, right? Maybe the most important stat on this page is the fact that if you have a two-second delay, right? Um, this was uh, Akamai, right, last year. And Akamai was looking at this, and they, by looking at a whole bunch of stores and pull it together, they saw that when you had a two-second delay moving from one page to another, that it shortened the session length by 51%. Now, if you're Amazon, and that means average person staying on Amazon is about eight minutes in a given day, um, eight minutes to four minutes, not so bad, right? But how many of you run Amazon? Right? Yeah, no, they're not here. They didn't show up to WordCamp Albuquerque. That's weird. Um, <laughs> So if you're not Amazon, you may have already a session length of two minutes, right? Cutting it in half is one minute. That may mean you go from four pages, right, to two page views. Ah, man, you've got to do a lot of work to convince someone in that short a time, right? So you want to make sure that you're loading quickly. The other thing to note is uh, bounce rates, right? If you don't know what a bounce rate is, it's the notion that someone comes from, say, a Google search, lands on a particular page, right? They were typing uh, T-shirts for people who sweat a lot, right? None of you, obviously, but there are other people that do that in Google. And so they, they type people who, you know, T-shirts for people who sweat a lot, and they get routed to a particular store, right? And when they get to that store, they're reading that page, and in reading that page, they go, that's way too expensive for a t-shirt. And then they just leave. If you land on a page and leave from the same page, that's a bounce, right? And the lowest bounce rates, right, were for stores that loaded, pages that loaded, in 1.2 seconds. Right? Now imagine if your store is running at seven seconds on a page load. 1.2 is a really far, far cry from that. Right? It's a lot of work to get down there. So, of course, what makes this harder is that everybody shops at Amazon. And because everybody shops at Amazon, right, fundamentally, they're resetting the bar for every single experience. Everything you do as a store owner is being compared to Amazon. Everything that you build as a developer is being compared to Amazon. And every store owner who asks you to build, if you're building for them, says, I want it like Amazon. Every time I get that question, and I get it a lot, right? Hey, what can we do uh, to make our store? You know what? I saw this on Amazon. I saw this on Amazon. I would like a store to work like Amazon. And I'm like, awesome. Super cool. And you have budget authority over this project? Yes, I do. Great. And you have Amazon's budget? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> So well, if you have the authority, right? So I, I was hanging out with the chief science officer for Amazon a couple years ago, three years ago. And uh, he said that on their thank you page, right, that's after you purchase, they were running 27 tests, 27 A-B tests on the thank you page after you have made the purchase. 
I'm like, dear God, what are you testing? <laughs> like, you're already done. You already took the money. Like, what is it? He goes, well, you know that thing when you hit, when you hit, you know, when you buy and it says thank you, and then at the top it says, uh, share this purchase with your friends, and there's a social set of buttons? I said, yeah. He goes, well, that's one of seven different versions. Some, sometimes it's a command. Share this with your friends, right? And other times it's a question. Would you like to share this purchase with your friends? Sometimes it's a specific question. Would you like to share this Norelco razor purchase with your friends? And he goes, we have seven different versions of those, and we test those. And I'm like, oh my God. He goes, that's just one of the 25 tests on that page. Now, the thing you know about testing, if you know anything about testing, is you need a certain amount of data to create what's called statistical significance, right? The notion that you didn't just get a fluke, right? Like people who barely start A-B testing, right? They're like, I put up the blue logo, I put up the, the tall logo, and I put up the wide logo, and I had seven visits, and four people like this one, so we're gonna go with that. And you're like, nothing you just said makes any sense, right? Stop talking and stop testing and find a professional. But it's because you need more people, right? You need a certain amount of traffic for that significance to be useful to you. And I said, thinking I was asking a super smart question, I said to the data scientist, uh, yeah, but you got 27 tests. How long before you get all the information back? I mean, you've got... Thank you. 
Thank you. 